iOS 15 introduced new built-in button styles for Swift UI. And the great thing about these styles is it gives you these Apple looking buttons that you see here for relatively low effort. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to convert your buttons to this new style. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So UIKit actually got a whole new button system introduced in iOS 15, which I highly recommend checking out the WWDC video here that goes into the details, but SwiftUI got a variation on that as well that will help you create these buttons. And that is, like I said, new button styles in iOS 15. So let's dive in. Here's my basic starter project. All it is is a button, right? That prints out uh, learn more tapped and then a label of a text with learn more. And then that's what you see on the right. Pretty default looking stuff but this is where the button styles come in. And the whole purpose of these button styles is to give you the Apple look and feel for relatively low effort. If you do want crazy custom buttons to fit your crazy new design app, you should probably stick with the old way you've been customizing them. But if you do want your buttons to feel like they belong in the iOS ecosystem, they feel like Apple stuff, this is the way to go. So on our button here, let's add a modifier called button style. Now button style has been there. Uh, however, you had to create your own button styles before. Now we have some built-in ones uh, and the two we're going to work with, well, plain is kind of what you see here, but we have bordered and bordered prominent. And if we look at these four Apple examples of like plain, gray, tinted, filled, we can get that between bordered and bordered prominent. Let me show you. So let's start with bordered. So I'm going to set my style to bordered, uh, click off of it. So the red line goes away and I'm going to zoom in uh, on the preview just so you can see the button like pretty easily. Okay, we're super zoomed in. I know that kind of mixes in with my uh, black background, but you see the button, that's all that matters. So that's bordered style prominent. And you can see we get the proper corner radius for free. But speaking of that corner radius, we can adjust that if we did dot button border shape, and then we can do dot capsule automatic rounded rectangle. So if we did rounded rectangle, you can see we can adjust the radius. If we did want to do, I don't know, maybe like an 18 radius and I'll click off of that red, so that kind of get, does give us almost the capsule look, maybe 12 is probably a better uh, number to demonstrate that. Yeah, so you can customize this if you want, or you can do, uh, you know, dot capsule, which does give us that capsule look, right? That perfectly rounded look, if that's what you're looking for. So you can play with the button shape. Uh, we're gonna comment that out for now to go back to just the default. So this gives us that gray look. And while we're here, let, let's spice this up a little bit. Instead of text learn more, let's do label, with the title key of learn more and then an image of book.fill. That's just an SF symbol. And of course you can see my button. It's not supposed to look like that. I'll comment out the text. Uh, so we just get the label. Oops, this shouldn't be image. Again, a good thing to remember. This is an easy mistake to make as I just made it. This needs to say system image. So I'm gonna go back and make my label just to show you how easy of a mistake that can be. So again, we want system image name because that will give us SF symbols. If you just do image, you're gonna have to have like your, your own custom image. So now we'll do book.fill. There we go. So that gives us a little SF symbol there. You can change that, customize that how you like. But now what I can do, now that I'm bordered, right? Well, let's do bordered prominent just to show you what it is. So bordered prominent will give you that filled look, right? So if you want this style button, do bordered prominent. If you want the gray style, which I kind of like the gray style, because if I do, you know, on the gray dot foreground color dot pink, like I really like this style of button, right? We have the gray background and then the colored letters, whatever color your app is. I like that style. But another style I really like too is the tinted style. So we'll comment out foreground color because when you wanna mess with the tinted style, you do dot tint and then we'll do dot pink. So this tinted style, as you can see, makes the background color of the button the same color, but like a 50% opacity. And then the foreground color is whatever color you chose. So this also guarantees a great contrast ratio, no matter what color you use. So let's say I use dot yellow. So this gives me a great contrast, even on yellow. When whereas like a yellow button, like if I did, I'm gonna comment out tint, go back to foreground color, my foreground color, I want to be white. There you go. Well, there's, you know, white on the gray background. But if I do, bordered prominent and now we'll uncomment the tint because that's the the background you see how like white letters on a yellow button don't look good so if you want a yellow button i'll just uncomment out foreground color to get rid of the white and i'll go back to bordered with the tint and you see how i'm easily like changing drastic button styles just by tweaking a couple modifiers that's what i really like about this system but anyway the point is contrast ratio no matter what color you have when you're using tinted 
uh, it's gonna work with contrast ratio. And then again, if I wanna go back to that gray look, we'll just uncomment out tit, give me my foreground color instead of being white, make it yellow. Cool, there we go, there's that gray button. So that's the new uh, button style in SwiftUI. Again, you get bordered, bordered prominent, and tweaking a couple modifiers on them can give you these four button styles that you like. And again, these are the button styles that will fit right in with Apple's ecosystem if that's the look you're going for in your app. And if you're here learning how to make your buttons fit into the Apple ecosystem better and look great in your product, you probably need a website to showcase that product, whether it's an iOS dev portfolio or a product page for that app. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that website for your iOS developer portfolio or your product up and running very quickly. Now I know as developers, we wanna build it, right? Because we can. But remember, there's an opportunity cost to your time. Building and maintaining a website, worrying about all the different screen sizes from an iMac to a phone to an iPad, as well as all the different browser compatibilities, like that is a headache, that is a huge lift. And I don't know about you, I would rather spend my time building apps than worrying about my website. So I recommend letting Squarespace take that completely off your plate. They have all kinds of beautiful themes to make sure your website looks great. They handle all the SEO and the analytics for you. So when you're ready to start building, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So there you have it. Those are the new button styles in iOS 15 and Swift UI. Like I said, great way to get Apple looking buttons into your app. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.